My next guests are here at South by Southwest for a panel entitled How We Get Hacked and What Can We Do to Stop It? Not terrifying at all. Please welcome entertainment icon and entrepreneur Jeffrey Katzenberg, engineer and entrepreneur Hari Ravichandran, as well as hacker Rachel Tobak. Awesome. Thank you. I just had a heart attack here reading that. And you, Rachel, right before we started, you said you have already hacked Jeffrey. Yes, I have. This has already happened. It's already done. It, how, how, quick, how quickly did you hack him? Well, the hack itself happens in about 10 seconds or so. Uh, we had to do some research, some OSINT, open source intelligence. Mm. Basically, just a fancy word for Googling before we went ahead and did that. So that took about a couple days. Oh, so a couple of days and then 10, 10 seconds, and now you control Jeffrey's life. You can just crush him. You can blackmail him for life. Corella DeVille. <laughs> like, bad news lady. When you, know. you found out how quickly she did I it. I crushed her. Yes. I just, overnight, I never. said, we will never be in this You'll town You'll never again. work in this hacking town again. We'll never hack this town ah. again, is what I said. And she's like, she goes, yeah, I right. know your Netflix cube. You're yeah. like, I'll give you anything you want. Yeah, right. It's, Have a nice life. It's, it's a fascinating panel because... You got, I got three folks here. It's like, it's like, all right, what's the all-star squad to talk about hacking? All right, we got a white hat. <laughs> We've got a former hacker, still a hacker, Rachel. Still a hacker, yes. You have uh, Hari, who's uh, in cybersecurity, innovator, entrepreneur. Yep. And you have a self-proclaimed digital, digital idiot, idiot right. who's Thank responsible for Lion King and Aladdin, Jeffrey Katzenberg. Right. Like, do you right. just bring him along for the ride? Yeah, <laughs> <I'm going to laughs> that's my, uh, that's my but, password. But an entrepreneur, I mean, you've you had a, story, a, a storied career. And so you three are together you're going to be uh, on a panel today, South by Southwest, at the Marriott later at 4 p.m., and you're going to do a live hack. Yes, the video is going to play at the very beginning, and you're going to get to see the entire live hack. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, there was someone who told me this in information security. They said, uh, I said, so how do, how do I protect myself? Uh, cybersecurity. He literally laughed. <laughs> Always a terrible sign. Yeah. yeah. He goes, ha, ha, ha. Cybersecurity is an oxymoron. Yeah. He goes, bro, you send an email, you might as well be writing something in the sky. Mm. And so you, you've innovated this, Hari. Like, is that, what, that just sent chills down my spine. This was four years ago. Yeah, I mean, it's only gotten worse, right? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. I, I think that's, that's unfortunate. Because you think about it, like, you know, if you were uh, four years ago to now, how many more devices you have, right? How many more things right. that are connected to the internet? You're using it a lot more than ever before. You know, even with the pandemic now, there's a lot more people that We're are, dependent upon it. Yeah, I mean, like you're buying stuff that you never used to buy on the internet before, maybe like, you know, remote school, et cetera. So the more data you put out there, uh, it's basically like having uh, a, a sort of a, the ability for people to come in and say, come, come grab more information, come up with more sophisticated scams. Right. And so, and every time you connect yeah. another device is another access point mm -hmm. for somebody to criminal, like this criminal right here, <laughs> to actually get access into your life. Right, it, so your refrigerator, you know, right. eh, my car is connected. PS5, baby yep. cam. my TV, yep. my baby cam, yep. right. Right. all of it. Yep. Every one of those is a place of vulnerability. Your microwave? My, oh, microwave now? Yeah. Also microwaves? Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, 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 take a guess what the most hacked uh, device in your home might be. Fridge. Your printer. <laughs> oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's That's like why all it these works. printers are connected. <laughs> and yeah, and you know, the, it tends to not be very updated, upgraded, and uh, they use that to kind of get access. And, and so what we've seen recently, right, just top of my head, Sony gets hacked. All right. Yeah, but that's a state-sponsored hack. That's yeah. a whole different level, and that's mm -hmm. that's not what we all is day to day. No, but you can't stop that. No, I'm saying okay, you can't stop that. But no one can. You're talking about high level. Sony gets hacked. We're looking at Experion gets hacked. We're looking at Target gets hacked. Yep. Mm -hmm. We are consumers. We have Target cards. You sit there and go, oh, I there's an implicit trust. Yeah. Like, that's how society works. If mm -hmm. I'm giving you my information, yep. For some strange reason, I trust that you are secure. Why? I have no idea. Yeah. Well, and then we find out, now you're telling me this, you're laying this on me, that there, there is so no here's security. A, here's a way to think about it, which is in your home, and I'm pretty confident everybody in this room and everybody watching this, over the last five years, you've put in a uh, ring doorbell. Yeah, not me. A Nest camera. Yes. Alarms. Taking notes. Yep. Right? So all of these things to protect your physical stuff. And if you look at the physical stuff you have in your home, computers, some TV sets, some appliances, a little bit of jewelry, no cash, your phone, you've done nothing to protect it. Yeah. And yet you have many, many, many more times resources that are accessible on your phone, your mortgage, your credit cards, your bank accounts, 
all of so those security things. security number, exactly. yeah, personal well, photos. Well, but I'm actually going to, uh, to actual theft of stuff, not yeah. just the information, but then where Corella here actually takes that information <laughs> and translates. So Her here, stage name is Corella. Right? That's really what they call me. Yeah. So <laughs> if you look at last year, a year in which burglary went up in, across North America yeah. 14%, in that year where it went up, the amount of theft, digital theft, from in that same time period actually surpassed it for the first time. So more is being stolen from us, from our uh, uh, online lives, than actually from our physical homes. I read a stunning number, and correct me if I'm wrong, that there was $4.3 billion, billion dollars worth of hacker theft. Yep. Right. And then we have 13 billion devices that are connected, right? That's exactly right. So you have 13 billion entry points yep. for and if hackers. And you're a criminal, to come and break into your home. That's bold. Very yeah. high risk. Yeah. That's right. And actually. Low payoff. Yeah. Medium payoff, low payoff, right? To back, to hack into your phone, as Carilla does here, it actually is very low risk and really high reward in it. So what a criminal say, you fish where the fish are. And, you see, and, and, and a smart criminal goes that way. And so you're a white, I use the term white hat. White hat means like the good hackers, black hats, the bad hackers. So you're a hacker, you do this. Yes. And you know the community. Mm -hmm. How, I mean, I, I started this, but I want to ask you, like how easy is it, what Jeff just said, that you could sit there one day, suppose you have ill intentions. One day you go full Cruella. You're like, you know, I'm just, I, Jeffrey radicalized me at South by Southwest, <laughs> right? He inspired me to go all in and go use my talents for evil, right? I went to the dark side. I'm not part of the Justice League. I'm going to go with dark side. Um, you're sitting. Let's just say you're at South by your, your hotel. And you're like, all right, I'm going to use my talents and I'm going to go fish mm -hmm. and I'm going to go get something. Take me through the process, how quickly you can do it. Pretty how quick. So probably what I would do is craft a phishing email specifically for you. We call that spear phishing. I would look up information about you online, maybe your social media, your likes, your dislikes, the services that you use. Then I'm gonna pretend to be one of those services, email you, maybe something like, hey, there's been an issue on your account, please reset your password, or- With hey, the link. With the link, mm. and you go ahead and you click on that, and I can steal your credentials. We call that credential harvesting in five, 10 minutes. How quickly do you answer and look at phones on your phone, right? All the time, right? All the time. And so you might go in there, enter your credentials, good, I'm safe, I protected myself. Meanwhile, I stole your credentials, and if you don't use multi-factor authentication on that account- Which I do. Two-factor, baby. Good, yeah. Does it give me any chance, two-factor? Yes. Okay. MFA is one of the best things that you can do. And if you're unfamiliar with MFA, it just means that second step where you maybe get a code sent to your phone or you use an app or a hardware key to log in. Anything to make sure that you're the person yes. accessing this right. phone, this, this computer. Yes, yeah. this specific website too. And so if you don't have those extra tools, password managers, multi-factor authentication, et cetera, then it's very easy for me to get in, steal your credentials, and be you on the internet. You can be, oh wow, you can yes. actually be. I can function and, as you. And that's what catfishing happens oftentimes, and often, but that's this low bar. This is yeah. like literally fraud. Stealing money, yes, yeah. big time. And, and, and then you get away with it. You're just sitting in there in the South by Southwest Hotel and then evil Wajahat who doesn't exist. I'm not worried. Yeah. I'm the one stealing everyone's money. I'm not worried because I'm the one. They're coming after me anyway, right? right? It's it's you know you talk about it and and I'm sitting there trying to connect the dots. Spear phishing. You sit there, okay, you can lose money, but we're talking about security on a higher level. We're talking about even democracy is under threat. All right, right? Yep. And spear phishing is how they got the access of the DNC emails, right? Yep. And yep. so it's one of those. You're sitting there reading it and you're like. Didn't they have two-factor authentication? Oh my God! If they, <laughs> they don't do have now. Two, yeah. well, they do now. But if they didn't have two-factor authentication, how can like the average Jose yeah. have it? You know, it's it's really interesting because when we look at like, let's say you get yourself into a situation, uh, if it's in the physical world, you can look around and you can say, I can assess threat. I see that you know there's something scary going on there. I should leave, et cetera, et cetera. But when you get online, it's a lot more difficult to do because it's so much more expansive. It's not like you can assess or scan threats very easily. It's a wild, so wild the, west. Yeah, I mean, so, and so basically right. what ends up happening yeah. is people yeah. don't associate uh, certain behaviors with what the outcome of the behavior is on the back end. And so, and, and add to the complexity, now if you gotta go fix that behavior, like, oh, like use a safer password or um, use like uh, 2FA, et cetera, you gotta go set it up and it's, it's uh, quite a bit of work. So if the, if the process isn't easy, you completely lose the audience. Mm -hmm. So you've got this uh, And the audience is all of us, by the way. Yeah, them. it's everybody. It's yeah. regular people that should be using these kinds of services, 
will end up not going through the work of, do, of doing this because they can't connect the outcome mm -hmm. with the action on the front end. There, so. you, know, you mentioned two-factor authenticity. I beg people to do it, right? Yep. I, I yep. take the extra step. It's a little bit annoying. Sometimes I ask you for the text. I sit there and I roll my eyes and I say, okay, I got to do it. But exactly what you said, there's a lack of, and I know this term has been used a lot, it's one of those buzzwords, but there is a lack of knowledge, there's a lack of literacy. Yep. Mm -hmm. And there is an implicit trust where people say, oh, well, of course, you know, I just trust the, 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 the nerds to get this right. <laughs> uh, and they don't know the hidden underbelly, right? And yeah. so how can we, and is it possible for there to be a kind of mass literacy for people to be like, yo, please, 2FA, do I mean, it. Th that is our mission. That's what we do at our, we want to create a safer internet. And that's sort of the, 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 the biggest core of that is also making people aware of the fact that there are real risks and dangers out there. But it's got to be a combination. It's almost a movement. Like you have to get people to start thinking about it saying, hey, I don't feel completely out of control. I can take control off my own security and my own data and have an active part in this dialogue with my data and how it's being used on the internet. You know, that includes everything from policy all the way to doing basic uh, things like using strong passwords, et cetera. So it's the, the, the gamut of... And, of and I'm, I'm assuming, Rachel, you're going to say uh, the best password is password? <laughs> That's uh, no. Matata. I mean, I would love for you to use that. <laughs> Still you promoting know, Lion King, Jeffrey. I like that. It's what's actually brand. funny is Jeffrey said this Hakuna Matata line in a media interview while I was doing my open source intelligence. And on the back end, Evan and I actually tried one million unique variations to try and break into his accounts. Wow. It did not work because he doesn't use Hakuna he does. Matata. <laughs> he uses long, random, and unique passwords for every were single Were you account. able to crack his password? No, we were not able to get in via passwords. We had to go in a different route. You had to click them. Easier like, one. Yeah. yeah. But there were many of them. Yeah, they're like, just give us two days. Yeah. But, you know, I, I want to ask about how there's some solutions here, right? And you mentioned password. And, yeah. and oftentimes we laugh and we say, ha, 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 people say password. But so many people, they're like, password's password. Oh, yeah, it's right. the most commonly used and, password. And, and, you know, password is, is one of your first, like, uh, steps to actually secure yourself. It's mm -hmm. like locking the door. What recommendation do you give to people when it comes to passwords? What I recommend is they use a long, random, and unique password generated by a password manager for every single account. My thing that I like to tell people is, if you can remember the password, that's probably a bad sign. Because it's something that you came up with in your own brain, mm. and you're probably reusing it for your bank, your social media, your movie streaming site. Let's say your movie streaming site gets hacked, the breach goes up online, I can see all those passwords, stuff them into your bank, your Gmail, and reset all the rest of your passwords, right? So that's why it's so essential that you don't reuse your passwords and you generate a long, random, and unique password stored in a password. You guys, and, 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 go and don't use the same password across five different services. Which most of us do. Right, which a lot of people do, 72% yeah. of, uh, of the users use the same password across three, four, five different accounts. You know, so in order, it seems like in order to save our democracy, in order to save our security, it, you need a, the Justice League to come together. If you're a Marvel person, <laughs> yeah. the Avengers. Yeah. So we have the Avengers here, right? We need more collaborations, it seems, between the tech sector, those who have the clout, the Hakuna Matata money, yep. and power, <laughs> and interest, and, and the nerds, who uh, to some are the Cruellas, but the hackers, right? Yeah. That's why I'm really excited about the synergy here. I was joking, I was like, oh, it's a motley crew, but this is the type of the crew that needs to come together. Yeah. Right. How much more of the synergy can be replicated? Because yeah, we're at South By, South By is known for tech, but this is a global problem that needs a global solution. It needs mm -hmm. global players involved working hand in hand. Yep, I mean, it's, it's uh, again, it, you know, it, it's both starting with uh, communities, like, you know, starting with, you know, people becoming more aware in their own communities, all the way to employers, for example, that's a huge point of distribution where they can inform and help their employees not just be safe on work devices, but also their personal devices, mm -hmm. uh, all the way up to potentially policy, which they've been talking about for quite a while now, which a lot of it ends up anchoring towards uh, enterprise uh, security oriented policy or policy that uh, uh, regulates the big tech companies about how they're using data. There's not a whole lot that's being uh, talked about from the consumer's perspective up to-, to We to, just get screwed. We just, we just yeah. find out like the, the hard way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Equifax got hacked uh, pr pr and you just pray to God, yeah. am I gonna get the email? And then yeah. you get the email and you're like- uh, Let me freeze have, my credit uh, again. Yeah, yeah, I don't have yeah. that much money anyway, whatever, it's a <laughs> pandemic. Yeah. Uh, whatever. Uh, kids aren't gonna m miss that. You know, Jeff, uh, you have had a storied career. You, you've, you've been able to leverage the storytelling and the success for, uh, of the cartoons into into like a lot of the, you know the ventures. What made you so interested at this moment to get into this space? Um, well, you know, 
technology has been a part of everything I've done most of my career, including as a storyteller, and movie making, and animation, CG animation. Which was 3D, revolutionary, by the way, at the time, kids. 3D yeah. movies. I mean, all these things have been, I've always appreciated. I'm not a coder. I can't write code, can't read code. But I appreciate the value of technology. And when, after I sold DreamWorks, um, I sort of looked and realized, if you look at 2010 to 2020, the impact on digital technology for all of us has been in virtually every aspect of our lives. Inescapable. Right? I mean, mostly for good, but not all, but, but it really is, touches every facet of our lives. If you look at 220, 2020 to 2030, the impact of digital technology is going to be 10x what it was. It's all accelerating, and the impact is just getting greater. And that's a revolution, and I want to be part of that. Mm -hmm. And but that's what excites me is the fact that today, you know, a great storyteller with a great story and a passion to go tell that story is what I've spent decades curating. Right. Technology is a great founder with a great idea and that incredible passion to go do it. And so the signals are actually really quite familiar for me, for me and also equally exciting. You mentioned stories, and I'm, I'm glad you mentioned like human beings are storytelling animals. Oftentimes, when people think of storytellers, they think, oh, creatives, writers, poets, uh, TV. But everyone needs a good story, right? And technology sometimes has a good story, sometimes doesn't. Oftentimes, I talk to engineers and coders, I try to give them tips. I'm like, no, you have a story. So, but here's, here's What's the story. What's the story here? Couldn't be simpler. I would like my phone to be as safe as my home. There you go. You got to rhyme even. <laughs> That's why he gets the big money. Yeah. That's why he did Hakuna Matata. But, yeah. Okay, but I'm serious. Yeah, you no, just think about yeah, it. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I think most of us feel our homes are reasonably safe. We hope mm -hmm. to think yeah. so. Okay. Well, no, they are. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can tell you, your phone is the dire. You know, it's the 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 absolute antithesis of that. And it's like you've left the front door, the back door, the keys in the car, the windows, everything's left wide open. And actually a sign that says, uh, Come steal, on in. steal this car. Yeah, but, Come uh, on in. NFTs here. NFTs, well, yeah. Right. So how is that a smart thing for us? Well, it's because it's been made impossible. And we're all digital idiots, so we don't actually even understand. Right. It's not like there are no solutions. There's thousands of them. Which ones do I need and why and how much and all of those things. And what Hari and, and, and Aura have done is actually answered that question and made that a single source of truth, a single place that you can go to and can make your on life, online life safe and secure the way your home is secure. What is that single source where, I, where a digital yeah. idiot like myself and Jeffrey can go to? Yeah, it's, 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 uh, you, know, you, you can just go to Aura.com and try to, try to get the, get the uh, a can trial. Can you spell it for us? It's A-U-R-A.com and there's a, a free trial of the product that uh, folks can download. But, at the core of it, really, we thought about it across two dimensions. So the first one is, there's just so many of these solutions out there. And a lot of them are like these little solutions that um, kind of maybe go after a single part of the problem, but not the whole problem. Mm -hmm. So we took all of that and brought that under one umbrella at a price point that made sense for families and regular folks. The second thing, and here's the important thing, it's, um, you know, it's a lot better if your product can actually proactively prevent some of these issues from happening. Yes, that versus, would be nice. So we, versus we, we usually get screwed on the back end. Yeah, because I mean, like, I mean, think about it. So an, an analogy is your house. If your house burns down, it's good that you know about that sooner than later. But your house burnt down, mm -hmm. right? So it'd be a lot better uh, if you can actually prevent the house fire from starting in the first place, right? So a lot of the solutions we saw in the market were much more reactive. Mm -hmm. Really, where we use a lot of AI, machine learning. Uh, systems is to really identify threats that are different for you versus Rachel versus Jeffrey and try to prevent these from happening from the get-go. And, and, it's, and it's, um, that's very comforting because oftentimes with technology, especially what Jeff was saying, technology is going to explode, the next 10 years is going to be growth, oftentimes we're on the back end where we unleash Pandora's box and yep. then we say, oh, yeah. we oh, should have seen that shoot. coming. <laughs> oh, shoot. Yeah. But thankfully you guys are going to be hacking tonight. Uh, at the Marriott, you're going to have a, a, a panel. All three of you guys, the superstar, is going to come together. Where you're going to reveal Jeffrey's dark, dirty secrets and blackmail him <laughs> in public, right? I got this final question because Jeff, you met uh, Waikia, who is part of our team here. Huge fan. Her personal favorite Jeffrey Katzenberg animation movie was Aladdin. Nice. Across the board, right? 
What's your favorite Katzenberg? He's not here, don't worry. <laughs> Jeffrey Katzenberg, Disney cartoon. That's easy, Lion King. Lion King. Yeah. That's easy. I don't have a favorite. I love, I love all my <laughs> I love children that. equally. <laughs> is, there, is there one that you feel like, if I can green light that project it didn't get through, if I could just go back and do it again? One story that didn't get through. No, I you got, got them to, all done. You got, got them all done. That's why I dropped the mic after <laughs> 400 movies, 41 animated. Jeffrey's like 85 TV really shows, did. five Broadway plays. A, like I, I want to give a shout out to two, please. That Ants and Prince of Egypt. No, well, those are the first two. Yeah, those are the ones. So it was an interesting path for us. So having spent a decade at Disney and loved every single day there, Walt Disney was my teacher. You know, I, I never met him, he passed away, but his archives and all of his, you know, work product there were, you know, breadcrumbs the size of Volkswagens. You could follow these no matter, even a, a, an idiot could follow them. Um, and uh, one of the things that was like the North Star of going to work every day there, he said, I make movies for children mm. and the child that exists in every one of us. Mm. Think about how that informs every decision, everything you do every day in terms of the values and the stories that you tell. So go to DreamWorks, out of 50% out of respect for somebody else's legacy and heritage, I didn't want to do that, and 50% of ego, which is want to find my own. So off we go to try and make non-Disney animated movies. And the first two, Prince of Egypt, you would agree, there's no chance that's a Disney movie. Ants, the third one was Chicken Run. Which is great. Satirical, great. right? right that yeah. And then comes Shrek. And after Shrek is made and comes and is a great success in it, the light bulb goes off for me. Now I know what DreamWorks does. We make movies for adults and the adult that exists in every child. And thank you for doing it. I appreciate it. And Lion King is still crushing it. It is. Yeah. But you guys are going to crush it today. Come check out their panel. It's at the Marriott. What time? Uh, 4 p.m. 4 p.m. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See Jeffrey Katzenberg get hacked. All the salacious details of his life will be revealed by Rachel. Thank you guys for being here. I really appreciate it. A world of thanks for stopping by at the South by Southwest studio. Thanks for all for tuning in. Don't forget, you can watch all of our studio interviews on the South by Southwest TV app, available on Apple TV, Roku, Android TV and Amazon Fire. These interviews are also available on our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash SXSW. And for a complete list of our interview schedule, check out sxsw.com slash studio. I'm Ajat Ali. Thanks for tuning in.